Well, good morning. The scripture this morning is found in John chapter 14, and verse number one. Um, uh, Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. And I love this next part. He said, If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, Andrew, uh, thank you for what you did. Uh, he, he mentioned that there's mansions in heaven. Can I just, this isn't part of it, I guess one third of I've been all over the, the place when it comes to churches, and, and um, my family had a, a gospel music ministry. We would go all over the place and sing and and all denominations and out hollers and up on ridges and, and, and in, in towns. But but there was one church we would go to and it always sing this song. And you may have heard it. And it was a lot of people's favorite song. It was called Lord Build Me a Cabin in the Corner of Glory. Have anybody ever heard that song? Anybody? I hated that song. <laughs> hated it. Lord Build Me a Cabin in the Corner of Glory. I've lived in a cabin all my life. I want that mansion. Right? I live in a very small, I want them to, sorry, forgive me for being fleshly and a little materialistic. I want that mansion. If he built it for me, I want it. Amen? Amen. And I don't want to live in the corner of glory land either. I want to live on Amen Avenue. <laughs> Hallelujah Boulevard. Glory for Street. Amen. Wherever Jesus is, I want to be right here and just be a part of the action. Amen. Some of you get nervous. Calm down. It's all right, okay? I've been vaccinated, spayed, neutered, all this. All right? So let's, 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 let's look here. Uh, you'll have to forgive me. I'm excited this morning. I'm hyper for heaven. That text we read is all about heaven. It is, listen, when you read that, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me and my father's house. Or many mansions, but we're not so I would have told you. I go to prepare a place, and if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I see heaven is God's promise. It, it, it's, a, it's promised by God, right? And it's God's place, right? And it's for God's people. Somebody say amen. Isn't amen. that good? And you know, I, I was thinking, my, uh, God told me this morning, I felt him tell me all week long, get my people excited about heaven. Get them fired up for heaven. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more suffering, no more saying goodbye. Eternal peace, eternal happiness, a glad reunion day. Get my people excited about heaven. You know, when I was a kid, you know, when I was a kid, Google wasn't invented. Did you know that? I'm older than Google. I, I, and some, there's other people in here who have white hair, gray hair, and no hair. They're older than Google, too. And when I was a kid, you couldn't just pull up an image of Disney World on your phone. We didn't have phones like that. Our phones were attached to the wall. And um, so you couldn't do Google Image and see what King's Island looked like or what Disney World looked like or what Myrtle Beach looked like. You had to wait until you got there to see what it looked like. And I remember being so excited about going to those places. I mean, the, that car ride, it felt like it took six days to get to Myrtle Beach. And it took forever to get there. We were like, what's it going to be like? What's this ride look like? And, and oh, what's the ocean going to look like? Now you can just pull this stuff up on your phone. But when I was a kid, I was so excited. Like, I would imagine, and I would imagine what it looked like. And But I was so excited to get to those places. So can we talk about heaven this morning? Yeah. I'm going to do it anyway. I thought I would fast, okay? But here's the thing I want to point out to you about heaven. Number one, I want you to notice that there's an invitation to heaven. There's an invitation to heaven. Guess who gives you the invite to heaven? I get invited to all kinds of things on Facebook. Everyone wants me to come to this and come to that, come to this and come to that. But the greatest invitation that you'll ever receive is to heaven. And you know who gives that invitation? It's Jesus Christ. Don't ever forget that Jesus said he came to seek and save the lost. So he can take them to heaven. He said, I've come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. That's in heaven. Jesus is all about making a way for us to go to heaven. That's what we're going to celebrate on April 4th, I believe. Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Hey, church, that's the Super Bowl Sunday for saints. That's when up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose the victor over death's domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, 
Christ arose. Listen, Herod couldn't kill him, death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. Somebody say amen. 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 If you'll shout for UK basketball, you can shout for Jesus. Amen. And Jesus is doing way better than UK basketball is this year. I'm going to move on, all right? <laughs> so, can I tell you something? The invitation is for all. He even invited a thief to join him in heaven. When Jesus was on the cross, the thief that was hanging right next to him said, this man does not deserve to be on this cross. We do. He doesn't. He said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. He even invited a woman who had been married five times and was shacking up with a man currently when he met her at the well. Do you remember that story? He said, listen, I'll give you water that will make you never thirst again. And she went away saying, come meet a man who told me everything I ever did, but he forgave me of everything I ever did. He even invited a woman who was a prostitute and full of the demons of hell, Mary Magdalene, to join him in heaven. That's where she is today. He invited, listen, he invited the, the tax collectors to join him in heaven, like Matthew. Matthew was born again and converted by the grace of God, and he's in heaven. So don't ever think that you're too bad. You've done too many bad things. You're too far gone. Don't ever think that. The invitation to heaven is open to all because Jesus died for all. Amen. Don't think you're not good enough. Jesus said, listen, I'm good enough. I'll die for you. I'll love you. I will save your soul. So listen, and, and you know, it's a, there's an invitation to heaven. There's an invitation to heaven. Jesus said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's an invitation to heaven. But secondly, there's also the inclusion of heaven. There's the inclusion of heaven. Can I tell you who will be included in heaven? All those who have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. All those who have had their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. All those who have put their faith, their hope, their trust in Jesus and Jesus alone to be their salvation. That's who's included in the redeemed in heaven. So the redeemed are included in heaven. Races are included in heaven. Black, white, everyone, no matter what ethnicity, what culture, what land you're from, what nationality you are, what, what social status you are, everyone is, is included in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He died for all, not just the rich, not just the white, not just those from America. He died for all. He loves all. For God, so loved the world. That's the world, not just West Virginia, Kentucky. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The redeemed are included in heaven. Races are included in heaven. Relatives are included in heaven. How many of you have a mama you can't wait to see? How many of you have, how many of you have, have, have a father, a parent, a sibling, a child, a friend, a co worker, a neighbor that has already graduated to heaven but you miss them? Do you miss them? Oh, I miss it. Can you imagine the reunion that we're going to have in heaven with loved ones that have gone on before? I've got, I've got, I didn't have a living grandparent by the time I was 30 years old. And I miss my mamas and my papas. And, and I miss, I, there's so many people that I can't wait to see in heaven. Heaven is going to have a reunion with our relatives. Heaven is going to be a place of rest. How many of you are tired and worn out and weary? Right? We've all reached that age where our backs go up more than we do. Somebody help me. Amen. Heaven is a place of rest. Perfect rest. Perfect peace. Perfect harmony. That's why he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me and my Father's house are many mansions. So, so listen, but, but just as heaven includes some things, heaven also excludes some things. You say, what does heaven exclude? Heaven excludes sorrow. Heaven excludes sin. Heaven excludes COVID-19. Heaven excludes cancer. Heaven excludes heart disease. Heaven excludes strokes. There's no more pain, no more suffering, no more sorrow, no more saying goodbye. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, I think I'm more excited about this than you guys are. Come on. There's an invitation to heaven. There's an inclusion to heaven. But lastly, there's an imagination to heaven. You know, I... I can't, just as, if you've ever been to Disney World, and you come back and you try to tell somebody what Disney World's like, you can't do it justice, can you? You just, you start talking about it, you're like, you know what, you just gotta go there. You just gotta go there. 
Well, can I tell you something? I can't cover everything about heaven in 15, 20 minutes this morning. But I can get you excited for it. And I can whet your appetite for it. And I can make you crave it. But I can't answer all your questions about it. That's why there's an imagination to heaven. Now, I can tell you that there are walls of jasper and gates of gold and streets of pearl and the river of life and mansions and there's Jesus and there's no more sun, there's no more night because he is the light. So I can tell you those things, but the rest we kind of have to imagine a little bit. And, and, and as, you, as you look at it, you say, what's it like? Well, it, at first it was called paradise, Abraham's bosom, and it was in the heart of the earth. And the Old Testament saints that died with faith in God, they went to Abraham's bosom, which was in the heart of the earth. When Jesus died and was buried, he, he led them from paradise, from Abraham's bosom to heaven. It's prepared for the saints now. So it was paradise. It was Abraham's bosom. And then Paul got to see it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I believe. And Paul was called up to the third heaven, heaven. And he, he said, the things I saw and the things I heard, I can't, I can't even explain it. And then John got to see heaven in Revelation 4. And John described it. He said it was unexplainable too, but he tried to explain it. And he said, there was a throne. And he sat on the throne of God. And he said, there was a rainbow around the throne. And he also said that, that, that there, was, there was 24 elders seated around the throne, clothed in white, perfect, pure linen garments. He said, there was a sea of crystal. And he also said, there was the redeemed of all ages around the throne of God worshiping. He, and he even gave the number. He said it was 10,000 times 10,000. If you get your iPhone calculator out, that's 100 million people. And he said, but it wasn't just 100 million. He said there was 10,000 times 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. That's a whole lot of people. And he saw them all worshiping around the throne of God. But, but, but he couldn't properly describe it. He just used his imagination to give us some type of a picture. Then in Revelation 21, he tells us, well, but yeah, but, but now, when, after the, the rapture and the tribulation and, and the millennial reign of Christ, he said, the old earth is going to pass away and the old heaven is going to pass away. And, and he said, I saw a new heaven coming down. And I saw a, a new, new Jerusalem coming down. And so, so it just leaves us to imagine what heaven's going to be like. But can I tell you something? It's going to be an awesome place. Because our Savior's there. And our loved ones are there. And we're going to be there because we've trusted in Him. There was an old songwriter from, from West Virginia who wrote the song Beulah Land. You ever heard the song Beulah Land? He said, I'm kind of homesick for a country to where I've never been before. There'll be no sacrifice. They'll never be spoken. And time won't matter anymore. You know why? Because it's Beulah Land. I'm longing for you. And someday on the I'll stand. I 
can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in awe of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to sing at all, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, I can only imagine when that day comes and I find myself the sun. I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what Will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. just 
Let our hearts know that this world is not our home. We're just passing through. Our treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the void.